Hello, here I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily change the inverter coolant on your second generation Toyota Prius, which is the years 2004 to 2009, and uh, I'm also going to show you how to bleed it. And um, so basically the Prius has two cooling systems. It has a regular cooling system right here um, that cools the engine, and then it has a second cooling system that's com not connected at all that cools the inverter. This is the inverter right here. And um, they both go through the radiator, but they go through different parts of the radiator. I believe the inverter coolant goes through the bottom and the engine coolant goes through the top. So yeah, here are the items you're gonna need for this. You're going to need a funnel. You're going to need about two feet of tubing that is one fourth inch inner diameter. Um, this stuff is like 15 cents a foot at Ace Hardware. You're going to need a 15 16 inch socket. Um, I had to go to Ace Hardware and buy one of these because I didn't have one. You're going to need a gallon of Toyota antifreeze. Make sure it's the pink 50-50 super long life antifreeze. Do not use the green universal antifreeze they sell at like you know auto parts stores and stuff you're gonna need a drain pan and you're going to need an empty gallon to put your old antifreeze I forgot to say you're also going to need a ratchet obviously because you have to unscrew a bolt so this is my Prius it's 2006 I took the front bumper off um, that's for a different project I'm doing um, you don't have to do that but you're going to have a bunch of plastic paneling under here that you might have to remove um, but basically the bolt that you unscrew it's one single bolt it's this one right here and it's right next to the transmission um, that's the transmission drain plug and all you do is unscrew this and let it drain into the drain pan and also you take the cap off the coolant reservoir also first and then you want to loosen the bolt be prepared because it is on there very tight and then you want to go like that and slowly unscrew it by hand and there it is now um the reason this is green antifreeze is because the the shop that did this the last coolant change put the green stuff in there instead of the pink. Um, obviously they don't know much about hybrid cars, but yeah, you're not supposed to put green antifreeze in anywhere in the Prius. Just gonna set that right there. And one last thing I forgot to say you're going to need is a 10 millimeter socket um, because the 10 millimeter socket goes on this little plug. This is the bleeding valve. You take that little rubber cap off and you're going we're going to use that. All right, so it's almost finished coming out. And now you want to take the 10 millimeter socket and s loosen this thing just slightly. Just like that, and so you can kind of unscrew it by hand. Don't take it all the way off, just a few turns, maybe two or three or four turns. All right, so once all the coolant is drained out, you want to put it in your gallon. Um, one technique I use that's real handy is I cut open something like this and I pour it from the pan into here and then from here into here. It helps me to not spill it everywhere. And then you want to put the screw back on and put it on nice and tight because you're not going to take it back off. And also there's a washer on the end of this bolt. Make sure you keep it on there. Don't lose it. And just give it a good Good pull, tighten it. All right, so now you want to retighten this, just hand tight. You take the funnel, stick it right there, and then you want to pour as much coolant in as you can. Keep going until it's all the way at the top. All right, once you got it filled up as far as it'll go, um, then you want to you come around here and press the ignition button with the key in there. Um, you can put it in ready mode or you can press the power button twice. Either way will turn on the 
the coolant pump and cycle the the, uh, the coolant through the you know through the system. So I just went ahead and put it in ready mode. And you can hear it running, the water pump, and you want to pour it like this as the pump is running. All right, so you can get it up. I got it up to about here. You might want to do it a little bit lower than that. But yeah, so now the pump is running. It is cycling through this tube right here. The water pump is that one right there, that thing, and it's cycling up here. You can feel it in the tube. And uh, yeah, and then when you do that, now you're going to connect the hose to this to bleed the air. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this little skinny hose and you're going to squeeze it on to the end of this. If you get the one fourth inch inner diameter, one fourth inch, it should be a perfect fit. Um, it's a little work to get it on there, but it's nice and snug. All right, I got it on there and you're going to take the other end of it and you're gonna stick it in this little reservoir. And now you're going to unscrew this a little bit just by hand and watch how it comes out the tube. See that? Now, now the coolant is running through the tube and what it is doing is if there is any air in the line, see all those air spigots? Or all the, the splattering? Those are air bubbles that are in the cooling system. And what it's doing is if there's, this is where the coolant goes and it's burping out any air and it's just putting the old coolant back in the, you know, in the coolant line. And you want to do this until this straw stops um, having those air bubbles and, and, you know, spittering or whatever, you know, spitting out like that. Until it's a nice even flow, basically. And as you can see, the coolant has gone down a little bit. It's down to about right here. So I'm going to tighten this so there's no more flow. I'm going to take this out and I'm going to put some more coolant in. Again, you want to just bring it up to almost full where the full line is on the little reservoir. Because right now, coolant is flowing through the system very rapidly. You can hear it. All right, so I filled it back up with coolant. Um, it's about at the full line. So now you wanna take this tube, put it back in there, and then unscrew this a little bit again. There we go, just, just like that. And there's the air bubbles. And just let it run for a few minutes until it is a nice steady stream coming out of the tube. All right, so it has been running for about five minutes now of a clean, um, steady flow out the tube. That means there's no more air bubbles in the cooling system. So um, what you can do is get a flashlight go like this, and you can see the where the level is. It's a little low, so we need to add some more again. So you need to retighten this. Just hand tight. Take the tube out. Put the funnel back in and put a little bit more in. Just top it off. All right, and I have a flashlight. You can see that is right at the full line, so that is right where we need it. And then I would just put this back in just for like another minute, just to be safe. Put the tube back in, loosen this bolt again. It can be a little, get stuck a little bit. So there we go, we got the flow going again. All right, after you've got a nice clean flow for about five minutes, I'd say, um, you want to go like this. You want to tighten this by hand, retighten it, 
pinch this off and keep it pinched like that. Keep that end right there. Raise it above there and go like this. Let go of the pinch and let it all that coolant in the tube drain back in the reservoir. Take the tube out, put the cap back on, and you're done. That's how easy it is to change your inverter coolant. And then you take the little black rubber cap, put it back on the bleed valve, and you want to take a little, some kind of wrench like this, and uh, tighten this. You don't want it to be too tight. You do not want to damage this bolt, or else you'll have coolant spraying everywhere. And uh, just a little bit tighter. Um, just like that. That's really all you need. And then with the antifreeze, what you want to do is you want to take it to uh, some kind of auto part store that accepts old auto fluids. There's a lot of uh, O'Reilly's and AutoZone locations that will let you dump, have a place for you to dump old motor oil and antifreeze and that kind of stuff. Do not dump antifreeze anywhere outside or in the drain or anything because antifreeze is especially toxic, um, more toxic than any of the other fluids, um, toxic to animals, toxic to everything. So just make sure you take it to a proper dumping location. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that helped. And uh, check out my channel. I've got all kinds of other Prius videos and other cool stuff. And uh, yeah, thanks. Have a good one.